Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Campbell. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Cheers, George. Cheers. This is a, hmm. When I see a lime garnish, I get excited. That's joy in a glass Absolutely. right there. Absolutely. Well, you guys, this is Smart Money Happy Hour, the podcast where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. So everything from pop culture, current events, and money. And today we are talking about how the global economy is basically one giant Russian doll. <laughs> Well, it's all just... It's a great way of putting it, actually. It's all a farce, Rachel. I know. It's so true. So we're investigating ghost kitchens. If you've never heard of that, stick around because it is fascinating. Juicy stuff. Deodorant brands and even Black Rock to see if we can figure out who's really pulling the strings around here, George. And this is not a conspiracy theory episode. This is true facts that we are bringing to you people. And it's a very interesting conversation. So this is a real, who's the puppet? Who's the puppeteer? Are there any... Like, uh, we think we have freedom when we're choosing our deodorant, but do we, or does really just like two to three companies own everything on the shelf? And before we get into all that craziness and how it affects your bank accounts, George, what are we sipping on? We are sipping on a Mexican surfer. And the so far, so good, Rachel. So mm-hmm. stick around to the end if you want to hear what's in it, how you can make it at home, our rating, and the cost breakdown. Yep, it's delicious. Are you enjoying it so far? I am. I'm going to move my lime garnish to the other side so I can... Very professional of you. Sip that there. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get to it. Rachel, have you ever thought you you knew somebody and then it turns out you didn't? Ooh. Is there any worse feeling than that? (sighs) Where you think like, you know, I'm actually listening to a podcast right now, Smart Money Happy Hour, and another podcast about a scammer and, it, and it's terrible. This girl, she like fakes cancer. So like when oh, I, oh gosh, so there's like all these stories about people that are like living basically double lives and you think, you know, or they're completely lying to people. So yeah, personally, yeah, I probably have had some experience, but that podcast has really got me going. I feel like I would have trust issues after that it's for a while. Intense. And so I think people might have thing. trust issues after listening to this episode. Possibly. Because something similar is happening in America's kitchens, and you're eating it. I know. Okay, so I didn't really know about this. I'll be very honest. Before we started talking about this episode, and everyone, like, in our content meetings, they were like, oh, yeah, ghost kitchens or uh, understanding, like, what's going on in the restaurant world, especially since COVID. And I'm, like, over here all naive, and I'm like, wait, what are y'all talking about? So let's dive into that part because I think that this is this is really fascinating. Let's define this. So a ghost kitchen is a shared kitchen that cooks for multiple restaurants at a time. And usually it's for, quote, virtual restaurants that are delivery only. So think about you open a delivery app and you see some restaurant you've never heard before, but you it put looks in, good. Yeah. And like for me, I'm like, I always search the type of food I want. So I'm like burgers or Mexican, you know, and then it gives you a list. So in this example, there's a, yeah, a burger place called Mr. Beast's Burgers. Yeah. And owned by a famous YouTuber, Mr. Beast. Yeah. Okay. So then you see it and you think, oh yeah, okay. Maybe that's like a new restaurant that opened in Nashville and they're going to pick it up from there and deliver it to my house. But that's not the case at all. Not the case. So Mr. Beast developed this virtual restaurant concept called Mr. Beast Burgers. He now has 1,700 virtual locations. Oh my gosh. It hurts my brain to think about that. Meaning that there's not a restaurant. It's just a kitchen that people are making these and then... So they'll like rent warehouse space in like an industrial kitchen somewhere. You can't go there. And that's where they do the actual cooking. And then the DoorDash driver will go there, pick it up, bring it to you. Yeah. So, I mean, like there's nothing morally wrong with that. No, and Mr. Beast is doing it the right way. He's very clear. This is not trying to be a fake out of a brick and mortar restaurant. But for just the average person ordering on DoorDash or Uber Eats, I'm like, I didn't even know this existed, George. I really didn't. It's a whole other world out there, Rachel. Where you been? Crazy. What are you eating? I don't know. That's the question, George. What well, you am get I like eating? pizza delivery. That's usually your MO, right? Yeah. And it's usually like a solid like Papa John's delivery. And or you're Jets doing it through pizza. the Papa John's app. Yeah. 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 Don't be fooled. Go straight to the source like Rachel. There <laughs> I know. You go. But, but again, it's these, yes, these massive kitchens that people build out. And so instead of having the overhead yeah, of having rent. a full restaurant, yeah. No frills. You don't have to hire servers. Yeah. None of that. You don't have to care about the interior. You're just there to make food. Yeah. And again, this one you know, doesn't feel as like slimy or scammy because they're pretty open about it, but not all are like that. Mr. Beast is one of the only good versions of this in the space. The other ones are a little sketchier, Rachel. So here's an example. You ever heard of Chuck E. Cheese? Have I? Frequent birthday parties there in the last five years of my life. (laughs) They actually do a great job. Thank you. (laughs) Well, depending on where you live, you also may have seen a different restaurant called Pascali's. 
Oh yeah, what is that? Little Italian joint that serves up oddly similar food. A lot of pizza, a lot of wings. Rachel, stop. Okay, so this is this is it. This is it. This is where it gets nuts. I'm on my Uber Eats app. And I want pizza from not the chain, but from like a fun local spot. And I see Pascali's. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, that sounds like a mom and pop fun spot. I'll order some pizza there. Local, you know, kind of different. And it's coming from Chuck E. Cheese. I never thought Charles Entertainment Cheese would do me dirty like that. (laughs) The nerve. Hey, let me say, though, with the overarching thing, Chuck E. Cheese does not have terrible pizza. I'll be the first to say it. That's fair. It's really not bad. But I feel lied to if I go and order from like a really small, fun mom and pop. Like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. This is like a I'm really supporting a local, local small business. Yeah. And it's from the Chuck E. Cheese kitchen. I can't. So here's the deal. Chuck E. Cheese started this virtual brand in spring of 2020 during the pandemic. And it says on Pascali's website, if you dig a little bit, and if you check the address on the Postmates listing, it will correspond to a Chuck E. Cheese (laughs) in your area. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Duped. 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 I do. Bringing it back. Throw back to that episode. But okay. So they do, they do, they do disclose it somewhere on the website. You just yeah. gotta, you gotta just dig. But it's like an unsubscribe link on an email. Like, is it that obvious? No, mm-hmm. you gotta dig for the invisible mm-hmm. four point font. Mm-hmm. So that means the kitchen at Chuck E. Cheese is preparing pizza for little kids having a birthday party at the brick and mortar store, and for kidults like Rachel. That's so. Who are crazy. ordering for a casual night in? Oh my gosh. Okay. So do you feel scammed by that? I feel like. Oh yeah. It's a borderline scam. Yeah, I mean, I guess they legally are okay because they. They disclose it at some point. But yes, when I feel like I'm like ordering from Pascali's, I'm like, oh, that's a fun little new, I want to support local. Yeah. Like I, you have a whole new mindset when you're not ordering chain, but then you're ordering from chain. Well, chain to restaurant. spice up this episode, Rachel, yeah. our team actually ordered both. <gasps> they got wings from Pascali's and Chuck E. Cheese. No pizza. Well, here's the deal. We wanted pizza. As you know, I'm a gluten-free gladiator. And (laughs) they say in the app that you can get pizza gluten-free from Pescali's, but you can't. That's another (gasps) lie. They couldn't do it. But Chuck E. Cheese lets you. So Chuck E. Cheese (gasps) won Pescali's zero. Wow. But who really won? But from the same kitchen. Okay, but instead we did wings. Oh, I can't wait. We went for traditional wings, barbecue flavored. And so we're going to try them both. We're going to compare the size and compare the price. All right, Lindsay. You got Maybe. it all? Do you yeah. have like the whole stash? Give me a minute as I make my way over. Yes. I'm nervous. <laughs> Are you nervous? I'm a little nervous, but I love a I love a blind test tasting. And you love a wing? I do love a good wing. Are you bone in or boneless? What's your preference? Bone in. Okay. okay. Yeah. We got bone in for you. Thank you. For me. Oh, yes, here. So we'll just have the whole unboxing experience. Oh wow. Right? So they so this is how they both came. So you ordered came. you got to go Chuck E. Cheese wings and to go Pascali wings. True? Yes. So same bag. We don't know what's what. Same packaging. Yeah. Uh, tied the same, George? How many knots do you have? And you get delivery orders, like confirmations separately. Oh. So one from Pascal. Okay, so it's very one from okay. I, have a one, I have a one tie. Do, I'm you, a one do you have tie. a double knot? Okay, no. so same person probably. That was me. That was me. They were oh. double knot. I thought it was on Dateline. <laughs> no. I was like, they, they were my, double knot. Oh like, my gosh. Scared. They were Moment. double knotted, okay, and but I they did, did com- it, redid it but for But they weren't knotted. Eats. They weren't knotted. They were. They were double knotted, and I had to unknot okay, them for so that's fine. But they had the same packaging. Yes. When you pick, okay, so double I mean, knotted. Same so bag. Have you ever seen Wishbone? This is real detective work, okay? So, okay it's not sorry. an amateur sleuth situation. Yeah. We need all the details, Lindsay. Yeah, this, I'm is, giving <laughs> this is our moment. It's not yeah, a game. I got you. This is our moment. Okay. All right. I'm tossing the bag. Yeah, toss it. Okay. Oh, yep. Okay. Pascali's. Pascali's too. <gasps> oh no, we've got the Y'all. same. Okay. Chuck E. Cheese just gave up. Wow. Well, then how are we supposed to know which one was which? I don't know. We don't know now. We don't know. But oh, hey. crap. I bet they're the same <laughs> wings because it's Yo, coming from the freaking This same is kitchen. not savvy or sketchy. Mine has celery. <laughs> Mine has celery. Mine has celery too. Yours has, a, yours has a special thing. What's yours have? I don't know. It's a little sauce <gasps> container. Do you I don't have sauce. Okay, Chucky. I mine's for sure from Chucky e. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is ranch. Oh, it's just a side of ranch. Okay, but I didn't get a side of ranch. Did you order ranch for both? Um, I if they gave me the option, I did. But if they didn't, oh man, then no. I'm actually pretty hungry. Okay, so I have one of these wings here. All right, I got a wing. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. 
Barbecue wing. Loving this on a white mm. velvet chair. I know. I don't mm. want you on the mic. That's so gross. All right, those are delicious. Mm. <laughs> okay, okay. What's the flavor? Barbecue, barbecue. flavor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wh- Rachel's gonna... down here. <laughs> I mean, they're fine. I think they're great. We have different palettes. Mine are for sure. For well, sure now the cheese. other one's going to have to eventually try the other one. Okay. Oh, right. I got to try one of Rachel's wings mm-hmm. now to confirm okay. they are, in fact, the same wings. From I the mean, same she kitchen. really went down to the bone on that thing, so. All right. All right, Rachel, I'm going to okay. try one of your uh-huh. wings now to see if it's the same exact wing. Mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. Are definitely. you saying it's a different oh, wing? Oh, I got something weird on yours. Gross. I don't want yours. Don't blame me. I didn't make the wings. I don't want yours. I want mine. Okay, let me try yours. Mine are for sure better. <laughs> mm. Mine are for sure better. Y'all, it's the same wings. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable by all of this. This will be the last taste test we ever do. Mm. It's the same wings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure the same. Guys, can you guys just give Rachel some privacy while she eats? <laughs> I gotta say, I wouldn't order them again. Really? Okay. Now, here's the thing. If they were, like, fresh, hot off the press, maybe they'd be different. But they're a little bit, you know, a little soggy, a little lukewarm. Mm. Well, that's, well, that's why I guess uh-huh. just what they were delivered to when we started recording. Which is why I don't do l- delivery. I have trust okay. issues with delivery. First that's of all, weird. what if the delivery driver mm-hmm. ate one? To put the sticker back well, on. But no, because he would have broke the seal. Mm-hmm. There was no seal. It was oh. a sticker. Oh, oh George, stop I mean, that. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Okay. I do need a... Oh, I got you. Wet nap. Mm-hmm. A server. Okay. I can I can definitively say... Same wings. Same wings. And kind of delicious. So, <laughs> Rachel's not hard to please when it comes to Should fitting. we have got the sponsor by Chuck E. Cheese? I think we should have. I'm, I'm or not Pascal's. kidding. Which sponsor do we choose? Oh, man. You got to go authentic. You got to go Chuck E. Cheese because it's from Chuck E. Cheese. Hold on. You said you have to go authentic? Yeah, you got to go to the real kitchen. And There's the real nothing kitchen authentic is about Chuck E. Cheese. No, it's just the fact that it is in a Chuck E. Cheese kitchen. Oh. It's not a Pascal's kitchen. It's in a Chuck E. Cheese kitchen. Wow, that was a hey, lot did of you mess. Get, did you get celery in yours? I got celery. Oh, you did? Okay. okay. But you didn't get ranch. I didn't get ranch. Wow. And I love ranch. We'll never know now which Was it which. the same sauce? Yeah, it's, it's the same exact same. So they're the sauce. exact same. It's, it's the exact same. Way. Hey, can I tell you the crazy part, though? Yeah. The prices on these are different. <gasps> no, they're not. Mm-hmm. Get this. The Stop. wings from Chuck E. Cheese... $16.49 for their smallest size. Okay. Number one, giant ripoff. Tascali's, on the other hand, fifteen twenty nine for their smallest wings, which means it's a dollar twenty cheaper to go to Pascali's to get your wings. And I would have thought the exact opposite. You Doesn't thought Pascali's put... has it can charge more. Oh, you would think because they're Cause feeding it's local like adults. And like, yeah, and you would think Chuck E. Cheese would be cheaper. Is there the same amount of wings in there? I mean, you guys... it looks about the same to me. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have not counted them all out, but they no. looked about the same. Yeah. Also, want to know something funny? Mm-hmm. They. On Chuck E. Cheese, it it could be called like barbecue sauce or barbecue wings, but then when you go to Pasqua, Pascal Pascalis, oh, I, know. I don't even know how to say it. But anyway, it would be fancy. It'd be like Louisiana barbecue. Wings. Oh, oh, they up the marketing. They're trying to say mm-hmm. like pistachio honey feta cheese da da da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're trying. Oh. To, mm-hmm. All right, and and cheaper, which is so bizarre. You would think all of that they'd be more. Yeah, so. I learned Go- a lot today. And that's considered a ghost kitchen, right? I learned that Rachel yeah. has low standards for what wings should taste like. <laughs> that Pascali's is cheaper I think I than Chuck E. Cheese. I have very low standards on food. I enjoy good food, but I don't need it. Oh, that's a give good way a, to put give it. Give me a Chuck E. Cheese wing or a Papa John's pizza, and I am. For me, great. it's I'm all about like when the food is fresh. That's when I want to eat it. So I don't yeah. want to wait 20 minutes for mm-hmm. someone to deliver it. Oops. Yeah, I'll need to reheat these in an air fryer in order to make them palatable. Gosh. Next time we'll make sure we have an air fryer. Get the air fryer. Okay. No, okay. So fine. You did great. You George, did great. You are so bougie. Unbelievable. No one's surprised. So um, caveat, virtual restaurants are often marked on delivery apps. So it'll say that it's a virtual restaurant. Oh, okay, so they tell you. Allegedly. Does Pascali's tell you that? Mm. That's a good question. Because technically mm. 
There's a physical location. I'm for trying to remember. Because you got to remember, I deep dive into all this. So I'm trying to remember like yeah, yeah, that yeah. piece of it. Totally, totally. Wow. Sorry. So interesting. Someone now listening should go check it out. Go check it out for us. Well, allegedly DoorDash has labeled virtual brands with a standalone store page since March of 2021. Okay. So now they tell you. So they're trying to be I more honest. I just think that stuff is so fascinating. But honestly, I don't use these apps a lot because I think they're such a ripoff, regardless of where the food's coming from. You know what? Okay. So before we continue, George, we have a new app advertiser on the show, Op Games. So excited about and this. And they have a game called Tapple, and it is so fun. You know how most games have like a bajillion instructions? I can tell you in one sentence how this game works. It's that simple. So all you do is choose a category, press the timer, and you shout out words related to the category that start with a certain letter. So you press the letter tab that starts with the word you said, and you move fast. You only have 10 seconds. Yes, it is such an easy game to play. And if you have a group of people that maybe like you know, kind of new friends or whatever. It's a great icebreaker. It is so fun. I want to go make some friends just so I can play Tapple. <laughs> I don't know that I like, have enough right now. No, you have great, yes, you have enough friends I'll to go play. I'll call Winston Cruz. He'll yes, play. I know. He he would play with you. So yeah, it, it's a great game. Friends, family, great memories. So if you want to check it out, just go to Walmart or wherever you buy games and start making memories with your family by playing Tapple. That's right. All right, George. So back uh, to some marketing talk. So I think another reason that all this kind of gives us like the ick is just because, you know, I think a lot of us buy things based on branding. Mm. Like we either know the brand or we see the label and it feels a certain way. It looks a certain way. Right. Like, Is there a brand for you like in the, you know, let's say the household toiletries kind of aisle that you're like, I just know this brand. I trust whatever they make. I'm going to buy it. Um. I'm going to say Dove. <laughs> She's a Dove woman. My deodorant bar soap. Yeah, it's just a it's a it's just a it's a safe bet to me. It just feels truthful. Wow. <laughs> it feels feel, truthful. They feel like they tell the truth, but I'm scared in this episode I'm going to learn they tell. You're going to learn a whole lot you're not going to like. For me it's honest. I don't know why. Yes, that's another Boy, great and brand. Method. Jessica Alba. I love Method. I use yes. their body wash. Yeah. And for some reason, like, I like the rubberized texture of their bottles. Yes. And it their just, branding is very clean. And I feel like the, the ingredients it, are clean because of that, even though it's probably not. I know. It's probably right? killing me. It, it it's probably fine. is, let's be honest. No, but all of it, it, it is amazing. It is amazing how we see something and the way it makes us feel or look, you become loyal to that brand. Well, it's true that sometimes a certain brand has better quality, but most of the time, the only difference is the branding and the packaging. Yes. Okay, so what's crazy is that we think we have the illusion of choice. So to your point, you know, you go buy deodorant, walk down Target, and you see, you know, a plethora of options. And you think, oh, my gosh, I have so many options. How wonderful to have all these options. To choose from when, what's the reality, George? Well, here's the definition of the illusion of choice. Oh, okay. To set us yeah, up yeah. here. That's good. The illusion of choice is a flaw in our brain's way of reasoning that causes us to believe that we have more control over our lives than we actually do. Amen. It's so existential. It's just, it's my, it's like, that's what I should have like tattooed on my arm. That's like my life's it's calling right there. Because I feel like we tattoo. all feel like we have, we have control and we think we are doing this. And no, we're in the matrix. We're, there's people pulling strings all over we the got, place. There's some Geppetto out there and we're just little Pinocchios. Yeah, and I think on much bigger topics than this. And then it gets down to, like, your cosmetics or your soap. That's true. It's very well, sad. The, the variety of consumer product brands creates the illusion that you have unlimited choices. But the reality is there's a few big companies that control what you buy on a regular basis. Yeah. And there's a really great TikTok video by Cancel This Clothing Company. His real name is Ian. And, again, he, he does what I said. He goes through the target aisle of all deodorants. And he finds and realizes that, yeah, there's not all these choices. Really, all of these are made by one of three companies. There's three big dogs that own them all. Yep. Well, let's run through these, Rachel, because I think this is going to blow some of the listeners' minds right here. So Unilever is one of the big dogs. They okay. make Dove, mm. your favorite. That's so sad. They make Axe. Mm. I'm in the same category as Same Axe. category as middle schooler. Me eating Sorry. a wing. They make Degree. Oh, man. And they make Schmitz. Never heard of it. You haven't seen Schmitz? No. Kind of a cleaner brand, right? Yeah, the natural stuff. It's like a little like elevated. I'll go with Schmitz. But man, Axe, really? Yep. Same company? You're no better than a middle school boy, right? <laughs> so don't think you're all fancy getting your dove. Heartbroken is what Sorry. I am, George. Well, let's move Absolutely on to heartbroken. another conglomerate. Okay. Colgate 
Palm Olive. I've heard of Colgate. They put a dash there. It's just Why? one company, Colgate <gasps> Palm Olive. Oh man. They make Speed Stick. They make Lady Speed Stick, and they make Toms. The the shoes. No. Okay. <laughs> Tom, have you ever seen like Tom's toothpaste? Yeah. Nope. I use Tom's toothpaste. See? I feel like all of these Is it major... like all natural? Oh man. I'm I'm seeing I'm totally a theme here. <laughs> Are you seeing a theme? All of these major brands have like their clean, oh, yeah. like kind of hip from indie the look. Same place, probably. Yeah, so yeah. I'm probably in my head, myself, so. Tom's was like their own thing. You yeah, know? no, I, that's what you're we right there. Think. A speed stick. Rachel feels like God. she's been misled by Dove and me with Tom's. Yeah, well, we're is... not even done, Rachel. The last one is a big one: Procter and Gamble, oh, yeah. P and G, as we call okay. them in the biz. I know them. You know P and G. I know P and G. They make Old Spice. Yep, fair. They make Gillette. Yep. They make Native. Yep. Oh, and Native is there. Secret. Mm-hmm. For some reason, Procter and Gamble doesn't surprise me because it feels like a. I giant just feel like company. they're huge, so I, I expect a lot under them. Okay. Don't expect Dove. But Unilever, you were blindsided by. Yeah. Is it going to change what you buy? Um, you going to start buying Axe now since it's the same company? <laughs> it's basically the same Rachel thing. Rachel uses Axe deodorant. We all know. <laughs> all right. So the point of these videos. I wonder if anyone uses Axe. They probably would be too embarrassed to even admit I it. I feel like there's dudes out there still rocking it. Just comment and just say Axe. Is there, an, is there an ax emoji so it can be like this hidden thing between oh, just the listeners? Oh, yes. Little comment in the comment section wherever you're Or just like review. Just like with hit, an just do a little ax so we know you're out there. Ax bros. Or if you use dove. Well, I know there's a dove emoji. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Why are we so impressed? <laughs> <laughs> is it Rachel's knowledge of the fact that there's a dove <laughs> the emoji? Yeah. I think that's what was impressive to me. Okay, so let's talk about the prices because that's what really affects our money. Because you're buying things. And again, you feel like you're buying a certain brands right like yeah. oh, oh it's native and it's well organic native and it's can i just thing. say because my wife gets native and it's like 19 dollars a stick i'm like no, what yeah, is that was 17 dollars that i just this? looked up yeah it's, it's very expensive so yeah. there's that so let's go through some prices here unilever okay. dove original clean deodorant 298 axe apollo anti-sweat deodorant 497 Degree Original Shower Clean Deodorant, 318 and then schmitz which is their clean yeah. brand lavender and sage aluminum free deodorant Thirteen sixty nine. Dang. Okay, but they can't lie about the aluminum free. Like, so there is probably cleaner ingredients. Yeah, I'm though. sure. Yes, yeah. but here's my question: Is it five times the cost because you <laughs> took out aluminum? I'm just confused by that. Well, your lift notes in your armpit is like a really big place that chemicals get in. When this did you go to medical school? This is what I got. <laughs> say, this is what I got sold on native. It's like, yeah, like your lift notes are a big deal. So a lot of my friends did like nat like homemade deodorant and stuff because it's a... Uh, if I'm Unilever, I'm going to be like, you know, Dove has aluminum, Rachel. You should buy Schmitz. Schmitz. If you really want to take care of your family, if you're a good mom. And I then I'm like, wait, know, it's the right? same people marketing to me. It's the same companies. That I, I know, shouldn't put aluminum in my body. Isn't that wild? That's crazy. Okay, Colgate. Okay. Speed Stick regular men's deodorant, 247. Let's go Speed Stick. Yeah, it's good. Lady Solid. Speed Stick. Shower Fresh Deodorant, two forty two, <gasps> and I'll just say I'm proud of the fact the ladies' deodorant is cheaper. I was going to say whole we did we did an episode on this George. on the pink tax. Yes, and this doesn't have it. So Speed Stick, way to great go. job. And then Tom's unscented deodorant, four eighty four, not, not the shoe company, mm -mm. four eighty four for Tom's unscented. There you go. That's what you can get if you don't want to, if you don't want to smell like your own bo. You can just go with that. Just do that. Yep. Okay. And you got Procter and Gamble, and Old Spice High Endurance Deodorant is three ninety seven. Uh, Gillette Clear Dry Tech Deodorant, five ninety seven. It's got the tech. Yeah, Native. You ready for this? N my Native Natural Coconut and Vanilla Deodorant, twelve dollars and ninety seven cents. Yeah, and then Secret Shower Fresh Deodorant, three dollars and ninety seven cents. So what I'm hearing is most deodorant is about the same price, but when you get into these clean brands, aluminum-free, fancy clean branding, it's going to cost you yeah. an arm and a leg Absolutely. and an armpit. An armpit and a leg, Rachel. I got <laughs> All there. All together. Okay. And you know what else, George? You know those little you got on your face? Spectacles? Yeah. So apparently there's conspiracies around this too of the uh, of the whole like this one's no sunglasses conspiracy. and eyeglass wear. It's a big deal. So there is a company out there called Luxottica. They own over 150 brands of glasses. So think about these companies you've heard. Oakley, Ray-Ban, Prada, Burberry, Chanel, Coach, Vogue Eyewear, Polo Ralph Lauren, Michael Kors, Tory Burch, and many, many more. And here's the kicker. It costs them 
anywhere from $4 to $50, depending on the brand, to make. And they can sell these glasses for like $150 for Oakley's and up to $500 for Chanel. (sighs) And one company owns them all. So we think, look at all these choices we have. Nope. It's all going to the same. Okay, so my question is, though, because Chanel is its own company, right? Or Oakley is its own company, right? Or no? Well, Chanel is its, its own not company. Even, this isn't just like the manufacturer. But Luxottica makes them all. Yeah, like they have their so partner that, so with that this is. brand. So it's the manufacturer of who makes the sunglasses. So like the same, they could be using the exact same like material or, yeah, and everything. Material, things like that. But yes. to your point, Luxottica is not the mother company for Chanel. Like right. Procter yes. & Gamble yeah, is yeah, the yeah, mother yeah. company. It's, it's who's making the sunglasses yeah. or glasses specifically. Is this, yeah. And, this and it's all in, probably coming in the, from the same factory. I mean, like, yeah. no, yeah. it is. Yeah. So crazy? your $4 glasses and your $400 glasses. Well, and you know why factory. it's 400 It's just those little C's that overlap. And that's what you, I mean. Yep. To that's a degree, the truth. that's what you're buying. You're paying for the flex. Is it worth it, America? If it's in the budget, Yes. And if it's my not in the budget, is, no. <laughs> I don't know why the C matters. I know. I'm just trying to give people the freedom to spend their money if they you're have right, it. You're right. Because you live like no one else later, you can live and give like no one else. And, and my Chanel wife is like, the- Yas, Rachel, you tell him. <laughs> She's definitely doing that right Whitney, now. I am for you. I am so for you. So, Rachel, this affects so many different industries, from food to beauty products. Everything we buy, it's all it's all kind of a farce. But there's one big one that we have to talk about. Okay. And that is the BlackRock conspiracy. Yes. This is a big deal. It, to the point that like it affects your investments. I mean, like, like oh, there's yeah. a lot of a lot of things with BlackRock. So I'm gonna let you kind of be the sage here and, and, and describe all of it because it's still I don't know. Well, those it's big. three companies we just talked about, Unilever, Colgate Palm Olive, Procter and Gamble. This is the crazy part. They all have the same partial owner. It gets even deeper. Oh my gosh, y'all. So the pyramid just keeps getting smaller and And smaller. who's the top? BlackRock. It's the villain behind the other villains, and it is giving some Avengers energy. <laughs> We're feeling all. You know me. All that so, energy. So, uh, yeah, I've heard of BlackRock. I haven't looked too far into it. Yeah, I haven't I haven't dove into this topic. But I know it's deep. it's very controversial, and uh, I'll, give, I'll give you a little tidbit about them, Rachel. Okay. They're an institutional investment firm that manages $9 trillion in assets. $9 trillion. So Nine basically, trillion. so many companies are under them. That they are. Yeah, there's millions, there's by. billions, and then there's trillions. So it's the yeah. largest money manager in the world right now. And for context, the current GDP of the United States is $26 trillion. Mm. That is wild to me. Mm-hmm. That this one firm produces a huge chunk of the U.S.'s GDP. Here's another comparison. Household debt in America across the board, including mortgages, is at $17 trillion. That blows my mind. So yep. BlackRock manages Nine about thirty five yeah. percent of the total U.S. G- GDP. Yeah. GDP. So majority of, or not majority, just under half of what's going on. One giant in our world investment is one firm. Giant firm. And you probably have investments managed by them. They manage lots of four hundred one k plans, mutual funds, exchange traded funds, or ETFs. And they actually started ETFs. Oh, no way. They're at the beginning of everything. It's so crazy. And Man. they're really good at what they do, which yeah. is maximizing profit. Yes. That is why they exist. So basically, their success as a company is due in part to their investment strategy, which is to diversify as much as possible and avoid risk. So they even built an algorithm called Aladdin to help spot Don't investment Don't sully risk. his good name. I know. They took Aladdin and like buried him. Man. Well, maybe it's because they're little street rats. So, <gasps> That's what it is. Great. Oh. <laughs> before uh, he turned into the prince, too. Prince Ali. Well, as we alluded to earlier, there's an alleged conspiracy here that BlackRock is secretly taking over the world. Yes, and as a result of their investment strategy, BlackRock is now the a large shareholder in many companies that are supposed to be competing with each other. So you lose competition. Yeah. that's America is all about competition. The it's, free market, Rachel. Yeah, and it's actually owned by one massive company. This so. is the new monopoly. That is so wild. That is so wild. Oh, boy. So this is a lot. So we're basically talking about these how these massive corporations basically own everything. It's kind of depressing. Not going to lie. A little bit. Yeah, we think that we have like all this like choice, but really it's all owned by the same people. Okay, so the question is, what do we do about this? So I would say, you know, if you're – really passionate about resisting the mega corporations, then, you know, you're like, okay, you have one choice. You either are part of it or you're not. So that means you'd have to like 
make your own deodorant. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> like I, have I will just give BlackRock my money, that. and it'll, I'll. I know you could talk to your financial advisor and take BlackRock out. And that's true. People have done that. Which so if you're investing fair. in funds, you're like, hey, I didn't know I was investing in those. You can yeah, choose you to can. invest in different funds. Yeah. So I think it's just one of those things. If you feel very convicted about the way the world operates with corporations and all of that, you can choose to. Eliminate we still have a choice as a consumer. Yeah. And you can be aware of the marketing tactics that lure yes. you into buying all of these expensive products that are using the same ingredients when there's a cheaper version out there. So that's doing right. your research, stay informed, that's an important piece of this. That's exactly right, yep. And also I'd say uh, change your perspective because most of us, we can't change these companies' business plans, right? I mean, it, it is what it is. Yeah, right? I can pick it out their front door, but... It's not going to mean anything's probably, really going to really change. change. Let's be honest. Yep. So we can't again, control Chuck E. Cheese. We learned that <laughs> they're going to do me dirty no matter what. <laughs> yep. So it's kind of like, what do you want to fight? I just have a lot of life going on. Well, as people of faith, I think it's important to note that if that's you out there, yeah, you, know, you have convictions about something. Yeah, and mm -hmm. sometimes we, I trust that you know God has the whole world in His hands, so I don't let anything spin me out of control. Sure, because that assumes that I have some level of control over this. Like, well, I'm going to do something about this. Yeah. But it's a good reminder. There's a lot of things we can't control, and that's a yeah. good reminder. Circle back and go, what can I control? Me, my house, my yeah. money, the decisions I make, the things I buy. And I think it would. So for me, after this episode, I don't know if you feel this way, listeners and viewers, but I'm like, okay, if I'm like doing my Every Dollar app, cause, and I track my transactions every day, like we get a lot of Amazon coming in because we buy a lot of stuff on Amazon or, you know, your target one hits or whatever it is. I do see, oh my gosh, here's what we're spending on. What a coffee, Keurig, cups, like whatever it is that we're spending money on. You can think, hey, if it's all coming from the same company, is there a cheaper version? It's kind of what we talk about oh, store brands. yeah. You know, Going like- Going generic. Yeah, that you can kind of be like, okay, but is it all kind of the same? And can I save some money and yes. a few dollars here and there? And if you want that native deodorant, budget for it. And yes, like you said, sure. Rachel, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, yeah. but as long as you're informed, yes. you're doing it for the right reasons, and that's the thing you want to buy with money that you actually have today, Yes, then go for it. Yeah. And you can do that with freedom and no regrets. So good. No regrets. Mm -hmm. All right, George. Well, I think it's almost the end of the episode, and we close out every episode with... Guilty, guilty as charged. charged. And this is where our producer, Lindsay, gives us a new guilty as charged question every week. And if we are guilty, we have to take a sip. Lindsay? George has already taken a sip. Why well, don't I have take to it guilty. away? Take. He's guilty. I love this. You can take a bite of wing. Yeah, a bite of wing. <laughs> okay, so this question came in from Alexis on Spotify. Whoa. Fun. Yep. That's cool. Yeah, she says, are you guilty of ever stealing someone else's story or joke and pass it on as your own? <gasps> oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Not quite story. But I would, uh, yeah. You An hear anecdote? You hear a funny joke and it suddenly becomes mine. <laughs> and you claimed it. <laughs> oh, I think I for sure probably like, or like reused a saying that made me laugh. And then I end up reusing that saying in like situations because oh, I think it's funny. I've probably stolen lines from Rachel, to be honest. Oh, George. Accidentally. Like, you know what I mean? Quotes? Like, okay, you I'm, know one thing I say? Like on stage, you know, we, we speak for a living. And so talking yeah. about money and I'm like, where did that come from? I don't know where. And I'm, and I'm like, <gasps> hey, oh, Rachel Hey, do you know what was that. mine? Can I say this? Yeah. And it has been stolen. Your I came up with a budget as permission to spend. That was me back Take in 2012. <laughs> and no one else had ever said that. Justice. And I said, <laughs> it's like permission to spend. And now everyone says it, which is yeah. great because it's the truth. But that was me. <laughs> You know what? From you guys now heard on, it here first. I'm going to start saying, like my good friend Rachel Cruz says, a budget is permission to spend. Please give me credit because it was. It That's was a me. good one. It was me. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what I said? Dave always was like, zero based budget. Here's what you do. Here's your forms. Da, da, da. And then I came along in 2000, well, technically 09, but, or no, 2010. Oh, uh, 09. Yeah. Okay. But it gave me a little bit to get on my feet to get my own stuff going. Yeah. And I had the epiphany. A budget gives you permission to spend. It does. That's what it felt like. So I started saying it, and everyone's like, that's great. And then Dave started and using then they, yeah, it. Yeah, 10 like, years ago. It's been a that's decade. That's Dave's thing, Rachel. And you're like, I invented that <laughs> 11 years ago. What have you invented that I've, I, I've probably stolen stuff from you, George? I don't think I have anything worth stealing. No, I feel like you probably yeah, have said you stuff. you do jokes. Deloney. I feel like we've stolen stuff from Deloney. I oh, have facts, yeah. are your, facts are your friends. Yeah. Sorry, Deloney. 
You know what I'm stolen from Rachel? I usually credit you though. I when I say give a little until you can give a lot. Oh, thank you. That is in my book. Then I I once tried to give Rachel credit and I got called out because it was not Rachel who said it. It was Teddy Roosevelt and I was like, my Okay, bad. so maybe Rachel didn't ever invent you have permission to spin it. We're going to find out that it was true. I was like I was like my good friend Rachel says comparison is the thief of joy. And they're like Teddy Roosevelt says that. That one yes. is a famous line from a president. That is yeah, not me. I know. Can I say one that's I even said, more embarrassing? Here's no, here's mine. A, no, no, mine is comparison will not only steal your joy, but steal your, your paycheck. paycheck as well. That was me. I added a little Teddy flair. You, you but it's like telephone. <laughs> it's like telephone eventually. So on air, I'm sitting next to Dave Ramsey on air. And I'm like, well, Dave, the Bible says adults devise a plan and follow it. Children do do what feels good. No, you didn't. And Dave no, didn't did. call it out. He was just like, no, you didn't. He let it go, not trying to embarrass me. And then after the break, I was like, that's not a Bible verse, is it? And he was like, no. I was like, he's like, that's something I just say. And I was like, oh, gosh. I he just thought it was a quote of Jesus, but I, he didn't ever say it. I attributed oh, no. a George, Dave Ramsey funny. quote to the Bible. That's funny. To be fair, it sounds like a Proverbs message version. You that's know what I mean? really funny. To be fair. That sounds Okay, I said something at the influencer event and said it. Probably some old president had said it. And it was actually Dave that, sold, that said it. They, like, pulled up the quote. Oh, Were you there for I that? remember that. I can't remember what it was. It was basically like... Your pile of failures you're standing yes. on or something. Success is a pile of failures that you're standing yeah, on. Yeah, and I said a president probably during a war, you know, said this. <laughs> and then they found it on, I don't even know if Dave really originally said that. General Ramsey. I don't know, Back in the yeah. 2012 Anyways, war. yes, Lindsay, we are all guilty. We're and I would be drinking more. Yeah. We I do good. try to give credit. Like, I don't try to intentionally steal being like, I'm going to say this. But if I ever say something that someone else is, call me out and I'll say, I'm hey, sorry. Hey, you do give John Deloney a lot of quotes. Well, actually, not even John. You say a psychiatrist that John quotes about the, the guilt versus— um, Yes, choose guilt over resentment. Yes, and you always quote you quote the other people. Because I know I, it wasn't John. Because I appreciate that, yes. Because then John's going to be like, dude, I didn't say that. It was Dr. Gabor Mate said that. You know, And I'm like, oh, I don't want to get I don't get involved with him. Sounds like a scary guy. Sounds like he owns BlackRock or exactly. something. <laughs> we don't want to— <laughs> So Don't give credit where credit is due. That's right. Oh, I'll man. That. Okay, so uh, I finished mine first. I loved yeah, this you drink. Did. It was delicious. And it's so simple. Just a quick take on a margarita, something different. So this was a Mexican surfer. All it has is tequila, pineapple juice, and lime juice. It was so delicious. That's it. And the cost breakdown comes out to $2.79. Oh, my gosh. Not bad for, like, fresh pineapple juice, fresh squeezed limes. Yeah. So go try it at home. We'll put the recipe in the show notes. And I want to know what your rating is, Rachel. What's, what do you rate this drink? I mean, I'm going 10 out of 10. Whoa. I would. I think I would I would order that at a restaurant. Ibu on our team is praising Like, I think about, like, a, four, right like a 4 o'clock Mexican, you know, pre-dinner, like you're out with chips and salsa with friends on a patio, Mexican server. You know what would make this even better? Mm -hmm. Fresh jalapenos in there would it would be a game changer. <gasps> be so great. You know what else would be so good? Chuck E. Cheese wings. Luckily, we have those, Rachel. So glad we do. So delicious. Well, I'm going nine out of ten. Okay. I wanted a little uh, more oh, pizzazz. You need a little. You need a little something. I wanted to be a little punchier. Mm -hmm. I, but I can. Do I that. think Ibu uh, nailed this drink. So shout out to Ibu. Yes. Well, you guys, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a new episode every Thursday, and also leave a review because that helps us so much. We love that em. helps us stay on the air. You know, because it gets the show out to more people. More people get to listen to the podcast and watch it on YouTube, and we want to spread and the joy. best of all, it makes spread Rachel's heart happy. Just do it for that reason alone. It does, yeah. So we'll see you guys next Thursday on a whole new episode of Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, happy Hour. Hour.